Hello friends on Facebook. I am going to try my first video uh, commentary on a story and I've, I'm just now learning to use um, video editors but I, I feel like I want to do this now and I, I'm just kind of like that. I, I feel I can accomplish something when I'm feeling I want to do it. And so I figured out that I'm going to um, eventually um, just place this part inside the video I recorded um, on YouTube, which comes from um, police, police report, police shooting. Um, it comes from a uh, let me see. Let me check that really quick. Yeah, the Real News Police Accountability Report. And I think the most effective way, uh, without really being very studied in what, ha I mean, I know what happened. And I have my very emotional, very um, uh, deeply felt sentiments and ideas and understanding of the, the problem, the problematic of these kinds of incidents in the United States, in particular, I care about California uh, because I'm more familiar and I've seen it almost happen a lot. And I can imagine, I can almost put myself in in all the trigger situations and all the things that uh, made things unfold the way that, that now are recorded. And so I can comment, I feel fairly um, realistically so I'm going to start now watching it and like I said I'm going to later place this this video inside the other one so you can just so the the footage is the main screen and I will sort of go along with with what's happening and make comments as I'm going it might come out a little um a little rough. It's the first time I'm going to actually try to splice a video within a video. And so, but like I said, I just want to make it and I'm now going to just start the video and um, about now, I figure this will be the introduction and then I will have, uh, this will be, this screen will become small and go inside the larger video. I'm just going to start it and so you should be seeing the same thing that I'm going to start seeing now. So this, the video is presented by the Real News per official um, category of the incident, of the event, which is uh, suicide by cops. I, of course, don't see it that way. It's really interesting. It's really interesting also to see a lot of the Freudian slips that the police make, uh, which tell you their train of their the, the the process, the the train of thought of how they uh, are subconsciously anticipating take him out. You know, terms like that. Right now they, they blocked the video for some reason, you know, and it's, they just do that and, and they don't care. We're later going to see their videos and we see when they block the, the camera, they're not supposed to do that, but you know, they do it anyways. Now the first thing that captures my my thoughts are look at the 
how real, how human this girl's apartment is. You kind of already know the kind of life and the kind of person she is almost by just seeing her kitchen. In fact, you can tell they're all looking around, not focused, not adamant or anything, almost sad sometimes because they realize, this is what I always say, that even though I criticize, there's something about them, they, they just, they know, they know the absurdity, the disproportionate, the... This came, this came later. Now, this, right off the bat, they're coming with some sort of non-criminal warrant to arrest, to take her to a clinic or something. Now, look at the, just look at the hypocrisy and the absurdity of uh, supposedly purporting to be of mental care, of, of a, a um, a medical sophistication that has to do with psychology and um, mental illness that would be all right, would, would coordinate with our police system to forcefully remove something, somebody from their house using guns and handcuffs and the explosive situation that that can, you know, the, situa the, the, uh, the explosive situation that that can lead to. I mean, half the times, if you've ever had any encounters with police, 75% of times, especially in the United States, where there is anger, there's build up trauma already in our population, 75% of the times, uh, they explode and resistance, and there's something that doesn't, uh, that does not, um, uh, how do I say this, uh, does not gel, it doesn't work. Something doesn't work. There is a, an insistence, a stubbornness in enforcing the citizen to obey. And it's not happening. People are obviously suffering something. They're suffering something that has to do with the, this inhuman lack of perception of what is really happening in, in the human mind. Uh, a lack of a brutality, a lack of sensitivity. And this has gotten transported into the the whole con, um, the whole structure structuraliza stru structuralization of the supposed supposed medical uh, um, sector of mental health, which in reality is t is being taken over by the brutality or the forcefulness, let's just say, of the police. So there's a total clash of um, of uh, intelligence regarding the respective areas of of our society of civilization, and you know the, the police are are are, um, are are given the task. For example, if there's uh, if somebody slips and falls uh, during a, a heated argument between two brothers or the father and the, the wife or whoever, and uh, you know all of a sudden the the fight gets interrupted because somebody got hurt and everybody all of a sudden uh, became aware, gained, regained conscience of, of, the, of, of the, 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 the humanity of the situation. They stopped arguing and they all started, you know, this happens all the time. People fight and they seem that they're about to beat each other up. And then when somebody uh, falls off, the unexpectedly gets hurt or, or uh, accidentally hurts somebody else, everybody falls out of that moment. And it, it's almost like we go back to the love and the understanding that we have as a family. And so if somebody trips during a fight and you call the ambulance, we're not fighting anymore. You know, and now what really matters is that our father or our brother or whoever fell and got really hurt, 
So forget the fight, you know, you call the ambulance. And when 911 answers a phone, they ask, they want to know the nature of the fight. They don't, uh, health and medicine gets relegated to the back. Controlling and dominating the social situation is priority in the, in the legal system. And so if um, you say that, you know, we were arguing and all of a sudden, you know, she fell or he, he, he accidentally, you know, slipped or what have you, they see it as, they, they immediately are trained to see it as domestic violence and the police come over. Now, when the police come over, they don't send the ambulance. The police will come and then maybe assess if an ambulance is needed. Meanwhile, a person may be bleeding to death. I mean, the, the most ridiculous things are happening right now because of a misorder of, of a social understanding. And so the, the police arrive and just like here, you know, this girl, look at her. I mean, look at her. She's, she's in trouble. She, yeah, she's lying, whatever. She pretends she doesn't hear him. What have you? She picked up the gun because she thought maybe what you can't use logic to try to explain her. She is, she's collapsing. She needs mental care sensitivity. She needs, you know, she, she needs, she did not need people to storm her house with guns. And that is just aggravating whatever is happening to her. So we, this is what I always say. We cause things to happen. Oh, so many people have been killed on the streets because the police have provoked socially in their ignorance of, of the reactions and dynamics of the human mind. They have caused situations and then, you know, and then they, they try to explain it all with the protocol they've been trained to uphold. You know, if she held a gun, you know, I, I argue about this with people all the time on Facebook and they say, well, if it were you and somebody was holding a gun against, look at her. This is what I was, look at the person, look at the reality of the, her room. She was shaking. She, she probably didn't even know how to fire a gun. That's, that's the truth. She probably didn't know how to fire a gun. But we have created such a, a, a mechanized protocol of, of, of logic and mythology and how these, look, it's so ridiculous. 10 officers show up at the, at the house of a little frail thing. You have to know, you have to notice the absurdity of that. And one, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> we have to address what we're doing wrong and how we got to be so wrong in, in dealing with people. Why isn't anybody? asking that and, and, and saying and putting their foot down and saying wait stop stop everything we're clearly 10 miles off how we should be dealing with another human being why isn't anybody able to do that this is what's scary it's like the country's careening out of control through through the the power of institution and authority it's just going bulldozing forward and nobody has the power or the place anymore to to be able to be heard and noticing something intelligent like a, a, a natural human analysis of this event of this situation all right i'm going to continue it she's supposed to know what a 51 she doesn't know what to do she just she wants peace she wants to heal Okay, this is the moment where supposedly she pulls out a gun. I haven't really seen, but there's a few shots where they show it, and apparently it's true. I don't. I still don't see it. It's a. It looks like a little, tiny little toy gun or something. But this, he says, "Oh shit!" says a police officer. Can you see how detached they are from the reality before them? Look at her. Look at why she she just didn't know what to do. She's kind of lost. She she just wants to avoid feeling worse, being in a, in a feeling more fear. She's trying to to protect herself, and police force people 
to naturally desperately seek to protect themselves more this is what this is where the clash happens uh, and there is there is actually uh, the notion of some i think i forget what the term is to pull back but they don't really understand that <laughs> that is precisely the that is the biggest issue they don't understand that that is what is leading them to kill people them not knowing how to recognize that they're unable to perceive the humanity of the situation. Maybe it's not well explained enough as to why that should be 10 times more important than it is. But the guy that's there, I mean, at that point is unable. They're so caught up with the protocol of carrying weaponry and coming into the house and looking and as if they're going into a war zone. You know, the police have a mythology, a protocol that that is more in line with, you know, storming a village and you don't know where, who's going to come out. Yeah, uh, we know where it came from. This came from those cases where they busted a drug dealer and it turns out that the person, you know, acted like he was all nice and gentle and then he also pulled out a gun or some relative comes out of it. Okay. But this is not that situation, and they should know that. They should be able to maintain a human sensitivity that allows that person that walks into her room to see that, to freely and comfortably understand, you know, I wasn't expecting her, I didn't think she would have a gun, she doesn't look like somebody. But as he's leaving the room and telling everybody, you know, get out of the house, she has a gun, Let's rethink what to do now. And, and obviously at that point, if we had a, an intelligent institution, they would have, it probably never would have gotten, or these kinds of, these kinds of, um, you know, assailments of, of a person's heart would not, would cease to exist. But if we could sort of rewrite the history of that event, it would have to be that they left the house. And they said, she's unapproachable. She has a gun. We have to, you know, she's not going to stand by the door and wait for the next person to show up to shoot them. <laughs> you know, she's just, gonna, that moment is going to blow over and they have to reapproach the situation. They probably should sh send nurses, ladies from the medical sector, psychologists that will come in and stand, sit with her every day and real social care, real mental health care, not that. That brutality, that, that display of wasted, what are all those people looking around like they don't even know why they're there. They look at her life, they look at her, all they can do is, is act as if they're, it's almost like trying to fit, um, trying to fit, um, um, you know, a, a, a system or a, a structure, you know, a, a scaffolding inside something that is, a different body, you know, it's almost like trying to insert um, a skeletal system for a whale inside a human being or a gorilla, you know, and pushing it, pushing it and make stretching it and making it fit. These people are, are at, they have, it's almost like they've been trained by people who come back, came back from the war and they feel that that is an intelligent way of dealing with criminality in society, which uh, clearly exhibits a complete ignorance of the forces and the things that have led to our crim our problems in society they don't there's no sociological understanding or intelligence at all about what has led these neighborhoods to deal drugs and what has led people in this, these kinds of suburbs uh, single people uh in hollywood maybe you know understand this is tip understanding the kind of profile that uh, I mean, an actress that was really famous and all of a sudden she, she lost all popularity and she got fired and they are not up to date on any of her life, anything that just happened to her. They have no idea why she's in that mental illness state of that condition. They just go in as if they were busting into a village in, in Palestine, <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd and nobody in government, in the state, in the city, 
And the police department nowhere is able to see that. This is what I'm trying to this is what I'm trying to get across what making this video. And I can see now that I'm 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 just not gonna succeed because I've already said it all. And I don't need to do this editing thing anymore. I'm just gonna post this video and end of story. Okay, I get so worked up, I forget about half, I forget everything I want to say, and there's such valid points. But I just, I just want to add, I'm going to tack this on to the end of the video. If there's one question, there's only one question I would make this, uh, the South Pasadena Police Department. I would like to understand why when they saw, when that officer saw that the guy that walked into her room and saw that she pulled out a BB gun or I don't care if it was a bazooka, <laughs> what matters is who holds the gun. That's what matters. That girl obviously is not the kind of person that will attack people with, she might get crazy. Okay, see, I get so worked up. When he saw that, what prevented them from pulling back, walking out of the house, and rethinking the situation? Why did they have to push? Why did they have to push forward? This is what I want to understand. I would like to hear an intelligent, logical, comprehensive response to that question. When they see, I'm not talking about, um, you know, a, 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 a band of bank robbers that if they pull back, they will gain an advantage and take more <laughs> um, ransom, what do you call it, hostages, you know, or maybe escape. No, she was in a room on the second floor. When she pulled out a BB gun, why could they not just step back and say, we weren't expecting this, we got to go about this, because the fact of the matter is, they all knew, all of them knew, that that situation where she pulled out a weapon could result in her getting killed and them killing her. They all knew that. So before that situation where a young lady who's not attacking or, or hurting other people or about to, uh, about to have a bomb explode or anything like that, is about to be you know, a, a lady that is mentally ill and needs help. And they're actually there on behalf of the whatever social care on top of it. Now, it's just so unbelievable. It's, you know, how can people not be going crazy and upset about, crazy upset about this? How can the governor not realize there's something really, really wrong that needs urgent attention? I'm, I'm frothing at the mouth. I cannot understand that the other people do not see the, the, the absurdity, the, the disproportionate l lunacy of, of, of those people, those officers pushing forward, having to nonetheless treat her like, like she was barricaded with, with missiles. <laughs> you know, why do they have to, why did they have to push forward? They leave themselves no, no alternative but to kill people. And this is what's happening. This is how all our citizens are being assailed right now by this procedure, this this manner of thinking, this way of, of reasoning uh, law, you know, policing in our society. It's resulting in hundreds of people getting killed because they can't think humanly about the realism of a the situation. They're thinking about it as a war zone, as, as, as a situation. They're, they don't see the person. They don't see the person anymore. They're blinded. They're blind. They can't see a little girl behind a desk totally messed up. He couldn't pull back. He couldn't tell me she's got a BB gun. No, he panicked. 
as if as if all of a sudden men came up from behind her and 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 this and, and started charging towards a police officer. He panicked. These people are not are totally <laughs> just unqualified. They are children. They're they're scary cat bullying children that they don't know what they're wielding in their hands, uh, killing weapons, and they react as if they're playing a video game or or watching a Hollywood movie. They're not really dealing with the reality of society. Somebody has got to be. Somebody has got to sound the alarm. Somebody has got to say, "Wait, stop everything! Can can anybody see what's going on?" I don't, I don't, you know, it's, uh, I just, I get so crazy, but I hope I delivered the point this time.